Welcome to this tutorial series of building RESTful services using Spring Boot and MongoDB. I am Bala Subramanian. Uh, we started this tutorial series by uh, inserting certain uh, uh, documents or certain records in the database. And then we deep dived into filter criteria, find and filter criteria. We were finding the uh, parts of the document. Uh, we are finding the records based on uh, set, uh, certain values in the sub document, certain conditions. Uh, uh, certain conditions, these are integer condition, boolean conditions. Uh, we also uh, looked into how do we uh, find the document by the primary key. So with all these things, we were we were uh, able to find the documents. So this is very important because when we have to update it, which is the next step we are going to look into today, we need to understand how do we filter the document. Based on that, we might have to mutate certain parts of the document or, or certain values in the document. Um, so with this, uh, let us directly go into today's agenda. Uh, uh, so what we look into is we will we will look into uh, we will look into updating the document using save method. Uh, so what we do here is uh, we will go and find the entire uh, document, modify certain values on top of it, and then directly process the same document. Uh, that's a, that's a way of uh, updating the document. Uh, uh, the second thing that we we'll look into is uh, updating based on certain conditions. Updating uh, a parts of the document, for example, we will not go and overwrite the same document again. What we will do is we will go and update only certain values of it. Uh, we will uh, then we will look into how do we update an uh, array. So if we if you if you can go and recollect a document may contain uh, our document model contains an array of array of values. So. Uh, which is called known language. So in real time use cases also there will be uh, array of values. So how do we go and update uh, the array values? Then uh, as and when we go and mutate a document, uh, the, the, the date and time of when the record got updated is captured as something called modified uh, date or modified date type. So how do we go and up add those field? Uh, how, how can we uh, go and update that value as well? We will go and see. Then finally, MongoDB provides a unique way to go and in update integer values. We will go and see how we go and update integer values. Then we will look into how do we update boolean values. We have sub documents uh, or arrays of sub documents. We will go and see how do we go and update sub documents. Finally, we will go and look into a term called upset. So what is upset? So we will go and find a document based on certain criteria or conditions. Probably let us find by the primary key. If the document exists, go ahead and update it. If the document doesn't exist, go ahead and insert it. That is called upset. So, uh, so we will look into how do we go and upset the values. Uh, with the agenda being set, let us directly jump into the uh, code. So, we will look into the data model. What is that we have added? Yes, I have added a field called updated date. So, this date gets uh, updated as and when we go and mutate this uh, record uh, which is the contact record so let's go and uh, look into the service method so what and all we are doing uh, first we are going to see what <laughs> so let's see how do we go and update the first name uh, so directly go to the service implementation uh, so what what does this method do so you look into it it will uh, the method contains signature which takes in email id as the parameter and first name as the parameter so we are going to update the first thing the uh, email id is a uh, primary key so we are taking the email id uh, so what are we doing here we are going and finding we know the repository class that we have uh, we have we built already which is the mongodb repository class we are going and finding the id which is the email id if it is present uh, if it is not present i am returning uh, minus one which means that okay if there is no record to update so i am returning minus one uh, uh so usually updates uh, uh, usually returns a long value why is it so as we if we can update the record we will we will say that this is the number of records which got affected by this update if not uh, we can return minus one based on this uh, uh, we can uh, the the caller can take appropriate action rather than returning null so there is no point in returning null here so uh, so we we are trying to find that if the record exists by this key if the des record doesn't exist uh, there is nothing to update so the number of effect effect records which got affected is minus one that is what we are trying to do probably in in the real time use cases or in based on the scenarios that uh, 
uh, you are building the software you may throw a record dot pond exception or custom exception uh, that's uh, that's up to the implementer but uh, but I, I i thought this would be the nice uh, better way to do it so i have done it um, so here what am i doing so i have assigned the contact uh, I, I'm, I since it's an optional class i use the get to get the contact so i'm setting the first name so that is the name which we are going to update uh, we have field called full name so we are we are updating the full name as well we have looked into how the how the full name is built uh, then i am saying say, saying that uh, go and i'll set the full name to the full name and then do a save so here what are we doing so we are taking the entire record by the key that we are searching we are up we are setting the value to the the, the name that we are getting and then saving the entire record and then finally we get the result right if the result is not equal to null then we can return one so ideally if, uh, if there is an exception an exception will be thrown here uh, so i am returning one so we can add a condition like if uh, result not equal to null then return one equals return minus one we can do like this as well uh, so so usually it will not be null that's why i am returning one but uh, that's okay as well so let us go and look into the controller i have created a separate controller because uh, if you if we see our progress uh, we have built lot of services uh, to get filter and we have also try looked into the dsl way of filtering uh, so i have i have for this tutorial series i have I've built a separate update controller um, so let's look into the first method So, so update. First step. So this is the method that we have built. So I'm calling this method. Uh, so nothing more than that. Let me run this application. Okay. So let me see if I have. So oh, as usual, we have started with uh, empty records. Let me go and insert all the documents can be bear with me there are only seven inserts i'm copying it i'm keeping you engaged let me go ahead and insert it here insomnia post control b first record inserted usually uh, we should start clean slate because uh, uh, as I build this uh, uh, my development time I might have altered certain values uh, but uh, while we are doing uh, the tutorial if we start with clean slate it will be easy for us to go and demo it properly so uh, this is an initial record setup uh, it is hiccup but it would really be helpful as well uh, you also should have uh, an automated script which can generate and insert it as and when we run the application that would also be a nicest way so uh, it would be a better habit to build the master data record in session at the time of application startup so that the, every time when the application startup uh, the record will be at a clean state why i did not do is because uh, i am building this software i'll be debugging it uh, so i did not do it the best way is to uh, go ahead and uh, build an automated tool which can insert everything so now let me see we have seven records uh, so we have to go and put, do the update so these puts are all updates uh, if you see the url localhost contact service event contact so there is a email id called Padmavati. so we are finding this email id and setting the first name to the first name is padma i am setting it to padhma so so Padmavati. So H is added. Kindly note it. It is very important. I am sending uh, this. The rest, uh, we are getting one because that many records got updated. Let us go and find. This is PADMA in the first name. I am going to find pretty dot count is seven only. Pretty. You note it down. PADHMA is coming. Uh, so that record got updated so this is the first method what it did it took the entire record set the first name and updated the entire uh, rewrote the entire document uh, so that is the first way of doing so let us go and 
find what is the next uh, uh, method in the update so i am going to this method uh, so i am using from this to from this method onwards uh, from the from uh, apart from the first one which we are, and we are saving the entire document uh, which uh, uh, sounds little uh, what do you say which, which sounds like it takes more space it it it, it sends the entire data down the network uh, since we are doing it in local so it is uh, it is transferring more data than when it is required consider the, the database instances will be in a separate subnet this will be in separate subnet and consider millions of uh, requests are coming is it i don't think it is a right way to go and uh, rewrite the entire document again and again so we should find a way to update certain fields of it for example consider the relational databases so what are we doing so we go and say that uh, update uh, uh, table set uh, column name equal to value where condition equal to this what it will do it will go and update only the particular column it will not go and update the entire row right it will not overwrite the entire row so uh, overwriting the entire document is an inefficient approach although that is that's a way which have in a way we looked into it but from this up, uh, method onwards we will go and go update uh, only partial documents what are the fields which we are going to update that is the only thing we are going to update so we are going and updating the mm, uh, the first name so what am i doing so why i have to go and find by id again the same contact uh, this is a round trip right? so what are we have taken a certain approach of uh, uh, have maintaining a full name so what full name is full name is a combination of first and last name so in ideal software building scenario software scenarios while you are building a software we should not be storing any derived fields for example the the full name is the concatenation of first and last name which is an inefficient approach uh, at any point of time if we want to get it we can go and get the first name and last name and concatenate it and send it back to the customer so we have stored it we for us to go and do some 10 types of updates and other things in the past part of tutorial but in real time scenarios or when you're building software uh, have this in mind that you should not be going and storing any computed values for example if uh, if uh, this is the price of every item in the order, you should not go and multiply, add, and all these things, and finally put uh, 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 some values which which is which is there. So, the persist those values and then uh, leave as is. If we need to get the balance of it, for example, consider the bank bank account. How the bank account stores all your uh, credit and debit is. Uh, every credit entry will be stored. Every debit entry will be stored. If you need to go and get the balance, they will walk through the entire thing and arrive at the balance. The computed value will never be stored and it is not recommended as well and although this is out of the scope but it, i thought it would be worth to mention it so uh, so we i am finding it i am just setting the first name to this uh, and and the full name to the value which i have arrived at this uh, and i am uh, setting the updated timestamp if we look into it that is one of our agenda so we have to uh, as and when we do it uh, if you see it i am just saying that go and update the timestamp i am not setting the timestamp value so why it is more important uh, there are two ways which uh, whenever we build a software when we update this timestamp right when we go and say that last created time last update time when you go and do it usually uh, people will go and update the uh, say that this is the time which is updated we're providing the value here uh, consider in terms of a distributed system where when we say that this is the updated time but this network call took longer than uh, some some uh, time to go and update and the, the time we got updated in the database is different and the time which uh, which uh, we set the updated time is different it, it creates certain anomalies uh, uh, where and all it will create anomaly assume, assume that uh, the the request uh, the app servers are in certain region which is following a different time zone and the database servers are in a different time zone it will create certain anomalies and exactly it falls on the uh, daylight saving uh, ticker date it might create some problems although this is out of the scope for this lesson but we should consider that uh, we should always store the updated date time where it got updated in the database so MongoDB provides an efficient way to go and say that set uh, time stop which is uh, which is at the time of updating it so that is what you are seeing that I am saying that go and set the timestamp uh, uh, for this field when the record is updated the field will values will be set it is a very important thing and a useful thing for us so i'm saying that uh, go and find uh, the document and find and update the first document so why why are we doing if there are multiple documents which matches uh, 
uh, I am updating only the first document. Uh, so since I am using a primary key field to update it, so always I will get one document as a guarantee that I am having. But if the filter matches more than one, it will update the first document only. Mm. So I think we have had looked into uh, this explanation enough. I have to go and change it. Update set. With this, I have to rerun this. Let me rerun. So what I will do here is for the same record I had added a H right. I move this H and then see if the and I can clear the values. There's a way I can clear values. And delete the correct response. Okay, so let me go and find it and show what is the current value. P A D H A is there. I am going and changing the to P A D M A. Note it carefully. So number of records updated is one. Let us go and verify in the database. Usually, P A D P A D M A. So that is how it is updated. So we are we are able to update the values appropriately. Uh, yeah. So with this, uh, let us go into uh, the next method, service implementation. So what is the third method? So update verified flag. So here, what are we showing? There is a field called whether the, when the whenever a contact gets uh, loaded into the contact application, there will be a background verification process which is going on. We might send an SMS, and and a field has to be going on and change that once the verification is done, the contact is a verified contact, and people can start looking into it. So so we are trying to look into how do we go and update a boolean value. It is as good as the same thing here. If we see, we are not getting the entire document. We are building a query. I think I have not explained previously. Uh, so, so what are we doing here? Every time when we need to go and find something, we have to build something called query, and we are building these where classes. So where we, we are saying that the ID, what is the ID that we are going to? So ID is the underscore ID. Uh, the this is how the ID is stored in MongoDB. And what is the ID value? And the email which we are passing. The next uh, uh, thing that we need to look into is update. Uh, so we are, we are going to do so what am i going to update so i am saying update dot update verified flag so i am going to update this field so query will go and find what we have to on what basis we have to query update will set what are the fields that i need to set and then say that i am also adding one more update right so again this dot current date i am saying add this current date as well so, so i'm uh, go and modify this current date as well uh, uh, and then say that I am going to find up do the update first. So update first will return something called updated result. So what is the result of this operation will be stored in updated result. And the updated result has lot of profit, uh, properties which is useful. So modified record count is what uh, will give how many records which got modified out of this updated operation. And that is the value which we are uh, returning. So let us look into updated result. What are the other properties it have? So what is the modified count? What is the matched count? This is also important. It will help if it, it is good to log this information as well for uh, debugging purposes or in the production. So when a query is uh, given, for this query, how many records matched? So what is the absurded ID? What what is the uh, wh wh whether the update, update is acknowledged or not? Uh, so all these things can be logged. But uh, right now we are not doing it for the this is we will look into this a little later but uh, I just thought of uh, explaining you what is what is happening in the background so what uh, let us look into what is updated result what are the other fields which are available mm, so with this uh, let us go and run set verified flag so for the same record if we look into it uh, where is this verified is false after this the verified should come as true uh, so yeah already i have the values so that i don't spend a lot of time in setting these urls so the value is one we are able to update we can see it it is false it should become true pretty 
verified become true so this is this Padmavati so let us change it to false as well to see the number of records which got affected is one pretty we see it again verified it has become false so and finally if you, if you notice it uh, uh, we have something called created date and the updated date so you see it the updated date is updated on the time where the record when the record is updated in the database which is which is very good so which will we will be able to know that uh, uh, what are the records which got updated in the last one hour if we have to do some reverse revert uh, operations or if we need to go and do some kind of reconciliation where a batch process goes and updates it it is very important to store when we are mutating it mutating a record we should be able to uh, we should be able to get store or we should store the updated date uh, for, for the purposes of a reconciliation for the purposes of a, uh, verifying verification purposes uh, updated date is stored also updated by is also stored since we are not using authentication authorization uh, which is not the scope of this tutorial uh, so so we have just stored the date uh, okay so we have looked into update of the whole document update of the partial document which is for first name and update of a boolean flag uh, let us go and uh, look into how do we go and we also looked into how do we update uh, add an updated date time so that is also important and we also learned how how do we do a query how do we do uh, update of a, how do we go and update particular fields here um, if you remember the, the contact contact has something called a sub document which one of the sub document is an array the other sub document is a normal sub document which is not an array we, now i am going to go and update the mobile number so so how do we go and update a sub document is what we are going to look into so I am going and finding out based on the ID which is the query based on this query the records will be fetched what am I going to update I am going to update the phone mobile uh, phone phone is the sub document here and uh, the mobile is uh, uh, yeah, the field name here so I am going to update this mobile number with the value that I am getting and I am setting the updated date as current date which is important and then and then getting the updated result and so there is something called updated result right when when we are getting the updated result we have to go and tell that what is the type of the uh, class so updated result uh, when updated update first takes three parameters one is the query and one is the what are the fields which has update and what is the type of the document that you are updating these are the three parameters i think i missed telling it uh, so with this let us go and run the update phone so it is the same uh, uh, contact we are going and updating it you can update a different contact as well but uh, but for the purpose of tutorial and the document this document is arranged at the last it is easy for us so the mobile number if you note it down it contains eight double seven double two seven 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 so i'm just going to add a hyphen here so which is uh, the, the std code of it in, uh, or the code the state code of it uh, I'm, I'm saying it so the update record count is one let us see so the mobile number got updated good so let us look into the next <coughs> sorry uh, so let's go and update uh, an array so if we if we look into it known languages is an array so a person a contact may know more than one languages so if i have to go and wh what update means i'm not going to go and modify what is in this uh, we will look into that as well sometime later uh, if i want to add something in this array so what should i do uh, if, if i if i have learned a language and, and i come and say that okay this is my uh, language that i have learned so what we will look into how do we go and add so what are we going to do so there is a method called this it is the same thing we we do a query by email id and then and then define an update and what are we going to update we are going to update known languages so if you note it down if we are going to add some element in the array we are going to use something called push so what push does push pushes some value into the array that is important that that's the simplest thing it will do uh, so if uh, and let us see after it pushes it will go and say that what is the number of records which got updated 
that is as usual we are going to return update language i am going to add something called malayalam if you note it down malayalam is not here i am i am adding it for the same contact updated font is one find out pretty malayalam is in so this is how we are going to push some values into the array this is also called update it is update doesn't mean that go and modify uh, something in that array value in that array uh, we are updating the entire array by adding certain things to it we will look into how do we modify it if there is a spelling mistake or something of that sort uh, uh, so we will go and see that also but, but this is one thing so the next thing that we are going to do is if we have to add multiple values into the same document what are we going to do for example if an array might contain one for example if I consider a shopping cart a shopping cart may contain more than one item right so if, if somebody has to put two items into, into that how do we go and do it that's what it is so let us directly look into it so this is the same thing what i make uh, what we are doing here is there is something called known languages and it will be a list of languages that we are passing i am saying push and then i say each we get uh, every element in the array and push it to here so for each element in this i am pushing it this is what i have to uh, this is what is the meaning of this statement uh, the query is the same and the, and the update statement remains the same but for the known languages get all the elements in the each element in the array and put this value here that's what we are going to look into so uh, i also forgot to show how the query will look like okay let, let us look into it here update languages directly so what is the next method update languages so what am i going to add so this is a different document i am going to add uh, there is a document which name venkatesh uh, i think it is this yes venkatesha verma so it can the, this contact Vaktesh Parmal has uh, uh, Tamil uh, knows Tamil, Telugu and Hindi uh, we are going to add English and Sanskrit here I will send it it got succeeded let us look into the query so push known languages not alarm so that's a previous query right let me check let me check if this query is locked or not? I don't think this query is locked. Okay, let us see if the database contains if the login is in. I think the application stopped running. Let me find it out. Uh, so I figured it out there was a problem in the value that we have given we have not given the right value uh, the application got stuck so I just fixed that uh, so what we have updated is we have we have updated English and Sanskrit notice this is a query string how a query string is mapped to a list also we can just look into it uh, so let us look into the controller so in this controller we, we have a language and say this language is, is a more than one value right so it gets mapped to a list so language equal to this ampersand language equal to this as many values we want to give as many values that we can give here so these are the known languages this person has is what i'm saying english and sanskrit if we go and find it the same person knows english and sanskrit since i have done in the background so let us go and update this email id with Tamil, Hindi, Malayalam, right? So again, uh, again, I can add English and uh, Sanskrit here as well for the different email ID. Let me do it here, and uh, the same value remains intact. Paste it, send. Let us find if this works. Yes, English and Sanskrit was missing. The same for Pavati, and it got added. So this is how we can add multiple values. Uh, to the same uh, array list on the list in the sub document uh, so let us look into the next service implementation uh, so okay this is what we looked into right update languages uh, let us look into what is uh, up update age 
think uh, okay let us look into age how do we do an in teacher update uh, so if we need to go and mongodb provides a way to increment values how it is uh, happening is if uh, the previous value is one it can be incremented to two so here what am i going to do is i am i am trying to demo how do we do increment in the document it's not about set i am not going to show how set works uh, i've just used the age because that's the only integer field that we have or we can introduce a field called uh, the updated count and then go and read that updated count and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, increment that value but i've just used uh, a field called age and then increment it so mongodb this this demo is uh, just to show that how do we use inc uh, so this what happens is what how we can use it for example we can have a background routine uh, for every day go and find out uh, those people whose birthday fall on the fall on this and do an increment by one that kind of use cases that we can think of here so what am i going to do is uh, i get the I open by the id and then and then if you notice note it down i'm just setting the updated date to the date and then i'm incrementing the age by the number that i'm giving uh, so let us look into the demo update age the same email id which i have to give here and incrementing by two what is the current age let us see current age is uh, this age 48 so it should go to 50 i can do i can do one and show send i think i did send show it did not yes i did send so the age became 49 let us see increment means doesn't mean that it is incrementing by one increment with the number that we give if we increment by two it should become 51 it became 51 so this is what we want to see so last time we looked into how do we go and uh, update the language and add values to the language so what is the problem with that approach is uh, if uh, we go and up add the same value again and again then also it will get added so it is since it is an array what are we saying is go and add it will add so let me show the same thing again um, and that's if the same pathology has English and Sanskrit as the known languages, we can verify it here. English and Sanskrit is there. I am going to add again same thing. It gets updated. Let me find it out. It gets updated. So what is the point? So it is not treating this as a set. Our intention was to go and check that okay, if there are certain values which are there, go don't, don't do anything. But if there is a value there, so go and uh, mm, uh, uh, update it sort of go and add it consider this as a set and then go and add if the value doesn't exist in the set so this is where we are going to say uh, update update set and that's what we are going to learn now so what is add to set what it does is it goes and queries that appropriate document uh, with the uh, appropriate field if the field doesn't contain this value go and add it if the field the piece con contains that value don't add it since uh, this is how a set works, set the math set operation, set uh, all the elements in the set are unique, so there is no repetition. So this is uh, this might be the use case all the time, many a times, right? For example, if we have an item in the shopping cart, uh, and if we keep adding it, uh, there is a uh, there will be mutations or there will be multiple uh, iterations of same element. Uh, so what we can do is if if the item consists uh, if the item on the package is the same, we can increment the quantity, such kind of things. For example, if, if the same credit in because of the network, uh, somebody pressed this button twice, right? So let us not add it again. So, uh, so to make this item potency kind of a requirement, uh, uh, we can use this uh, add to set. Uh, so let us look into a different uh, document, right? What is that document that we have? So let us look into the same thing. I am going to add Malayalam only to the, uh, uh, to the, the Padmavati again and then use um, update language in the set right so update language in the set yes this email id here no, what is the of this email id sorry about this I'm copying this email id and then paste it here 
and then send we'll go and find Malayalam already exist so since the Malayalam already exist it is not added twice so if I have to add Tulu send go and find Tulu gets added so that is what is the point what I have done is something wrong in language which should be added to known languages but that is okay that's a, that's a small business mistake but you get the intent of it right any language which exists it will not get added but it will, if it doesn't exist it will get added that is the purpose of uh, uh, the demonstration let me go and tell it it should be updated in some field called known languages yeah, so the we, which we have what we have learned here is uh, if the if the value doesn't exist it will go and add create an array and then add it so so please understand that so i'll fix that in the uh, in the next uh, tutorial for this uh, so the next thing that we will look into it uh, uh, is uh, we are going to look into how do we go and do multiple uh, uh, updates for example we will go and check uh, find all the persons in the state for example if a, if a campaign is going on and find the search to those candidates by certain uh, criteria and then go ahead and update it and that's what we might want to do it right so if we are going to look into what is the multiple update uh, so let us look into this the query condition is uh, i'm going to um, search for an element of, uh, which is in the sub document right the state is in the sub document we, we can directly find it in the top level but i just want to show uh, even if you want to update multiple values uh, it would look like a, a the same even if we are finding it by sub document or anything it, it looks the same uh, that is the intent of this uh, i am setting the updated date i am setting the verified flag so here what are we going to do we are going to do multiple updates and then it's the same query it's the same um, uh, update field we are saying that what is the document type that we are going to do update it is the contact class and the, uh, the collection name is context this is an optional value but i have just added so even with, uh, without this uh, it is going to work okay there is no compilation error so okay uh, so let me let me run this update by state let me find what is the state you see verified is uh, is verified is false here and uh, verified is false so Andhra Pradesh uh, they both their their state is uh, Andhra Pradesh right Andhra Pradesh let us find into Andhra Pradesh and then and then update it So Andhra Pradesh, paste it here. Verified is already false. True. Okay. Let me find it out just a second. Also, there is a small mistake which I have which was missing, so I'm just going to that's why it was not updating. I'm sending so we get a two document which got updated. Uh, so let me look into that pretty yeah, is that verified verified is true here state is Andhra Pradesh verified is verified is true here this is this is Andhra Pradesh and verified should be true verified is true here so these are the two documents which got updated since these two are uh, true, let us go and uh, update it to false again to see the multiple updates work. Send. So we again we got two. Let us find verified false. Verified false. So this is how. Let me let me go through this same again because it is it is not that trivial to understand uh, this update many. So update multi uh, update multi provides based on a character wild card character condition selector uh, uh, which is going to result in multiple documents i'm just going uh, i'm going ahead and saying that go and update all these documents and, uh, and you can give uh, the query and the and the conditions uh, as usual uh, but instead of uh, finding a one it uh, updating one it is going to update many uh, the last part of our tutorial or today's lesson we are going to look into is upset uh, I have just explained at the time of introduction what upset is. I'll, I'll tell it again. 
the concept is important for us to understand that. so it is uh, go and find a document based on certain criteria if it exists go and update if it doesn't exist go and insert that is what is called upset so since we are going to do upset it is considered as a full document update for example if you are going and updating many parts of the document for example address is changed address contains more than one fields phone number is changed uh, uh, and uh, and uh, the passport information or any other information travel document update uh, is, is changed somebody is coming and doing a major update it is as good as uh, we can go and replace the entire document rather than updating uh, where this equal to this this equal to this where id equal to this we can do it so this is one such criteria we do and the other time where we can do is uh, whenever a field comes uh, with a private key id we'll go and search whether the uh, find the document by id if it doesn't exist go and update it uh, uh, if it doesn't exist go and insert it uh, uh, that's what we used to do it right for example in terms of item potency if you need to handle item potency if there are a lot of uh, uh, people using this contact management application they say that uh, i am supplying this document with the id and in the nature of distributed system if the same request comes twice we should not be doing it all the time we can we can look into upset as well but upset will result in overwriting the same document with the same set of values uh, item potency has to be handled in different way if it exists don't go ahead and write it we are just making up a use case and telling uh, upset is if it exists overwrite if it doesn't exist uh, write that is called upset update or insert is, is combined as upset so here what am I doing I am going and finding the document by id I am getting uh, there is nothing to update here because it is an entire document uh, I am just setting the update to the current date if uh, uh, if the document exists it will go and uh, update else it will insert it is a simple thing instead of uh, uh, the previously update first uh, update uh, uh, multi uh, we are doing upset but the concept of upset is what we need to understand and i am returning the modified account mm, update we have something called upset here no i have not saved the get query but that is okay i have uh, i have the Okay. Uh, this is the value that I'm going to do. Uh, this is the post post. Uh, this is the swagger that we have built, right? Using this also, we can we can test. I'm just going to refresh this. Okay. Uh, so it will look like this, right? We are going to update it so when this comes you have to press this try out this button it will be having a sample value so we, since we have uh, the sample value here i'm just going to take it because this has become a little dirty and uh, yeah i will execute this since it is running so since this id exists count should be seven because that is the total number of document that we have uh, but this contains a lot of fields right which is the same quality let us see whether this has come nice okay there is some issue let me find it why it is not but the idea behind this update is it goes and rewrites it i got what is the response the response code is 200 response body is one let me check i think it should have updated and not doing it properly let me find it out oh i think there was a small technique which i have to restart the application if you see it there were more languages which was added now now whatever values that we have set is got has got added uh, since the document existed it, it got upset uh, it got updated um, with this uh, we have come to the end of this uh, tutorial uh, thanks for your time. If you like this uh, video, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Uh, thanks for your time. Bye.